I'm pleased to, pleased to introduce Kevon Kielzan from ZipRecruiter. He's been working for, at ZipRecruiter for a year. He went to college in Istanbul, Turkey, and attended grad school in Santa Cruz. He will be presenting a talk titled, Crowd Surfing Tweets. Please join me in welcoming Kevon. Same query 
and then you can get structured data back uh, out of their API. So this works perfectly fine if you're interested in sorting keywords. So if you're looking for Wimbledon and tennis, then this is the way to go. Except you're going to miss some of the data that is related to your keywords. So for example, this tweet uh, has, it doesn't have Wimbledon in it, and it doesn't have tennis in it as a keyword. So your search will not return you this tweet, even though it's related to what you're searching for. So what you can do is, you can add a couple more keywords to your query if you want to improve data manually. So assume, assume you wanted to add a couple of players there, and maybe the London, whatever. But even if you do that, you're still going to miss a lot of data um, that are created on the fly. Uh, so assume a uh, first-time player just made a glorious win and made it to uh, trending topics. So you will miss that unless you manually update your query by hand. Or assume some famous person just made a typo and people started making fun of them and it became a meme and whatever. You're going to miss all of that uh, conversation as well. So what you need to do uh, to get around that problem is to update your query. It's, it's really simple. But you have to sit in front of your screen 24 hours monitoring what's going on then updating your query, which doesn't make sense at all. Uh, so my project was to automate that, pretty much. And since you're using the API to get data, uh, you're getting some very well-stretched data in JSON. So you end up using that data, you can end up using that data to plot nice graphs as well. So what you're seeing here is a network of people who are retweeting each other um, with respect to Istanbul Marathon. Uh, this is something you cannot do with regular search, I guess. And you cannot, you can also, you can draw maps uh, easily. Uh, this was also Istanbul Marathon, uh, and the locations of tweets are just coinciding with the. Uh, uh, marathon route, so we, that was pretty cool to see. Uh, so what we did was we used this tool called Drenash, which was also built in the same lab that I worked in. And um, what it does is it it's uh, it's something in between user and Twitter API. So instead of running your own streamer, you just run a uh, Drenash instance, and then it connects to Twitter API on top of you. What it does is, uh, its, it's main feature is have, it has a central server, uh, central data storage in uh, university, and it has multiple clients. So what you do is you, you create a client, and then you run your query on your client, and that client connects to Twitter API and passes data back to central storage. Uh, why this is really this is really useful because you're having all your data in one place, and um, since everyone else in your lab is using the same uh, approach, it's really easy to share data uh, among researchers and, and uh, different projects. Uh, for example, let's say you're looking for elections, uh, you just joined the university and you just want to look at election tweets related to elections. Um, and you go back and you will find two years ago somebody else did the same research or a similar research on elections. So you, you all of a sudden get uh, data on elections of two years ago that has the same structure as you are using right now. Uh, it uses a central storage. I already mentioned that. It's, in, uh, it's a schema list database. It's pretty much the only only time I will mention NoSQL. Uh, so how it helps is if, not if actually, when Twitter makes a change, when they add a feature, 
uh, if you are relying on a relational database, then you're, either you have to update your, uh, your wrapper, or it will just break. Uh, so having a schemaless database and then just printing, uh, just, keep, just storing that data as it comes, uh, helps you get around that. Uh, just to give an example, at the time we did this project, Twitter didn't have a feature that lets you comment when you're retweeting. So uh, we we would have had a broken software, but it didn't break. Uh, another way this helps us is that. When you connect to Twitter, through API, it actually gives you a fraction of data. And uh, to get more data, uh, well, theoretically, if you have more than, one, more, more than one clients, you will get more data. And how it works is, assume, assume there are two researchers uh, having, we both have clients, uh, we both have very nice clients, which is like right here. Uh, and when I'm running my query, and my fellow researcher is not actually running anything right now, so what happens is their client starts streaming my query too, so we get more data. Um, theoretically, practically, it's it's a little bit overlapping, but kind of works. And another, just another way this helps is. Um, Sometimes uh, they like to make breaking changes on APIs, so you need to go ahead and update your uh, wrapper around to the API or whatever API you were using. Uh, in, in the case of breaking changes, you just need to update, uh, you just need to install the update of Drainage and then you're done. You don't need to go around figuring out what's wrong, which saves some time. So, Query Pro is the name of what I did. It works like this. Uh, user has a query, uh, Wimbledon and Tennis, and then the query starts running um, on Drainage. Drainage actually passes that query to Twitter, and Twitter in turn returns a set of tweets to us. And uh, Query Pro looks at those tweets and tries to uh, make a guess of what words would be related to this query they're already running. So how it does is, it actually counts the words in tweets, uh, gives them a score, uh, marks some of those as candidate keywords, and then if it thinks that this is good enough, it just adds the uh, candidate keyword to query, so your query becomes Wimbledon, Tennis, and NATO. So you get that tweet you saw in the uh, screenshot. And then this just loops over and over again. Um, so it's it's a um, it updates itself as topics that people talk about changes. So I assume NATO was popular at the time um, between um, Twitter users. So it adds that to query, and then when it realizes that's no more a topic, it just removes that from query. So it just keeps looping. And uh, we also built an interface around all this schema. So what, what user sees is just an interface. They write Wimbledon and Tennis, and then press Enter, and then the, everything else happens behind the scenes. So what I just mentioned, user starts a uh, query, um, free converts are marked as candidates, and then uh, candidate words, they're uh, doing well in their score are added to query. Uh, likewise, unpopular words get kicked out of query, and this just reports every uh, interval and rebuilds a query. So, uh, this is just one example on what we used this tool to. Uh, this is actually kind of in reverse order, so you have to start from bottom to go up. Uh, Clinton and Trump is the initial query here. This was our doing the debates uh, last year. Um, in the first iteration, it doesn't change the query. It's still Clinton-Trump, uh, 
but it actually marks some words as keywords, as candidates. Um, but it it's has to to update the query yet, so it has to wait for another uh, iteration. And on the second iteration, you see it adds uh, a couple of words, uh, the full names, which are two grams of uh, candidates, and uh, and the keyword debate is also added to query, which was actually what we were trying for. So we were trying to see if we can get the debate by just using Clinton and Trump, which was which happened pretty quick in, in about 30 minutes. Uh, another example was Brexit. Do you want questions before you go on, or should we wait till the end? Uh, it would be nice if you can ask it at the end. Should I mention that earlier? Sorry. Uh, another example is Brexit. So this is this was a while ago uh, when Greece had this referendum on whether they should accept a uh, a financial offer from European Union or not. Uh, and the, the word Brexit was um, tied to it. But we instead started with Greek and Greece to see if we can get to uh, anything else related. Um, so we started with Greek and Greece, and it added vote to it, which is nice because it's kind of related to what was going on at the time. And then all of a sudden, we got those keywords, finance and minister, and then the name of finance minister of Greece. Um, this was a unique example because, personally, I had no idea what's going on with finance minister of Greece at the time. But it happened that uh, he actually resigned and posted this tweet, uh, which we were able to catch because we updated our query. So this suite only has three keywords, minister no more. You can't get to it by just typing Greece, but you can get to it by typing minister, uh, which is really nice. But these are all good examples. So um, it didn't work all the time, like, you, like I showed you here. Uh, so what happened with this particular Greece and Greek uh, Brexit query is that it found keywords Germany and China and then it added those keywords to query which got so dominant it actually kicked Greece out of the query so we got to we ended up in somewhere that is completely uh, noisy that we had no intention of going so it doesn't work all the time um, just just a little bit uh, just a little summary of what we did. Uh, we have collected about 60 million tweets in two languages, uh, English and Turkish. Actually, the, the uh, Turkish data set worked much better than English. And if you think about it, the reason is uh, when you type elections in English and search, uh, what you get is elections tweets related to elections all around the world. So you might be getting some data about elections that are going on in somewhere else in the world. But when you type uh, elections in Turkish to Twitter, chances are you're going to get tweets related to Turkish elections. So it was much more precise, but we all experimented in both languages to see what we can do. Uh, among those 60 million tweets, uh, about 70, 70 million are original content, which means the uh, Twitter user actually typed the tweet, and the rest of 40 or so million are retweets, which means they just um, forwarded the same content to their uh, group. Uh, we ended up running uh, 20 or so searches uh, about politics, like Brexit, uh, elections, like elections in here, or elections in Turkey. Uh, we also had some uh, uh, Wimbledon marathon and some soccer game queries. We also tried some tried uh, to get some insight about some products. So uh, to see what users are talking about, a particular smartphone or whatever. But that didn't quite work out as well. Uh, there is we're, we're writing a paper. It's still a work in progress, but uh, we'll see how it goes. 
Uh, thanks to Professor Susan Escudal, who was my advisor at the time, uh, Oliver Günger, who built the tool, Kernash, and all other members of Souls Lab, who helped me a lot. And thanks to you guys for coming and listening. Yes? How do you handle ambiguity? Like, for instance, the word free. You have a movie free, you have a band called free, there's connotations for the word free. So the question was, uh, how did we handle ambiguities? Um, I don't think we had a special measure in place to handle ambiguities, but um, that was actually some noise we got, uh, just like you said. Uh, it's, it's also similar to the example of elections I tried to give you when explaining languages. Uh, you're getting, well actually if you go to Greece, Gray, when you run, when you ask Twitter to uh, return you tweets that has word Greece in it, it will return you a lot of tweets that has nice pictures of traveling people. Uh, so that's that's a noise that we couldn't quite get rid of yet, but it was a work in progress at the time. Um, I was just wondering how you split up the words. I noticed in your Hillary and Trump example, you had you know their first name, their last name, and also combined. So how is the algorithm deciding what is a word? So it, in in this case the. Um, multi-word uh, keywords, two grams especially, are preferred over uh, single words. So first, what, what we look at is we try to see if there are any common um, two words combined. And then um, we take those, and after removing those, if the single words are still popular enough, then they also gather to query. So there, what we did was uh, we so assume there's a there's a ton of tweets that has Hillary Clinton in it. Um, that means Hillary Clinton will be in the gray as is, uh, and we remove those Hillary Clintons, and then we are left with Hillarys that are not that doesn't have Clintons and Clintons that doesn't have Hillarys. If those are popular enough, they also get out of gray. So we don't we didn't have a special measure to. Oh, well, let's go ahead and divide this into two, or let's try to merge those. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, question. So if uh, I'm interested in Apple, following the Apple, everything about the Apple, and uh, somebody tweets something about iPhone 8, for example, being delayed, did you guys think of how you could start like linking the concept of Apple being the owner of the iPhone, the iPad, Everything, even the competitor like Samsung, for example, releasing Galaxy 9 or 10. Yes. How would you approach this? If you guys thought about it. There was, there was actually a lot of work to be done when I left. Okay. Uh, but, oh, so his question was how you would relate Apple to iPhone or, or a concept of smartphones to there, from there to Samsung, whatnot. Uh, so if you actually, we didn't have a check for semantic meaning of the word, but once you do that and start querying about individual words, uh, if you query Apple, uh, you might get the fruit or you might get the uh, company as well, and from the company you might work up the tree and then get technology or whatnot, but um, we didn't really have any work done on semantic meanings of the words, but that, yes, that actually uh, was an idea and it's a great idea. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Yes. Yes, so um you may use the case to like even watch the full show. So I have um, a question regarding uh, the business. For example, in the utility industry have a, like view of social media uh, mining to inform the customer that is serving, for example, to the TV. So there was an outage in several areas and in order to localize the areas that have an outers, they have to go to like readers and see all the tweets from like different regions and draw the patterns from those like data. So is there any ways and how do you approach um, for business how what is the approach for business when it take um, into consideration for social media mining, the data? 
in order for them to like inform the customer about the outages even before the trigger. So the question is how would a company would let their users know of an outage? Yeah, so for example, this is a very specific example. So <clears throat> so business they usually the business should be the one to inform the customer about like, any unexpected mm -hmm. changes happen right. to their services. But often when the customer they spot any like um, unexpected thing, they just mm -hmm. like update it on Twitter. So the company want to lead the um, be ahead of the delivery of the information instead of triggers. So right. there any kind of we um, so what's your approach in um, building a data mining social media platform that we can analyze the Twitter patterns so we can have a better um, understanding of it. Yeah, so I think there is a chance of uh, mining for user complaints mm -hmm. that doesn't specifically have the keyword you're looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, not exactly related, but we did some work on uh, earthquakes, uh, which there is already a ton of papers written on earthquake detection through social media uh, in US and Japan and Australia. Yeah. So what we did was we did run a continuous query that runs the keyword earthquake in Turkish and that was partly successful. So I think your question uh, is kind of related to that. So if a company wants to uh, track what their user base is talking about, uh, about their product, just a simple keyword of typing the company name or product name might not be always enough. Yeah. So you might need some sort of uh, manipulation, some sort of improvement to the query you're giving to to uh, to, to uh, get and have to get a message of users complaining about a possible outage. Oh. I think. Okay. 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 Last one. Just a quick question. Um, just a quick uh, curious. You probably already talked about this a little bit, but the uh, data pipeline. Were you sending your data to like? Amazon Web Services, or was it university servers, or like, how were you taking it? It was mostly university servers. Okay. And uh, the, we actually had a problem with that too, because uh, there was the, uh, at the times, Twitter becomes inaccessible from, from several countries for various oh, reasons. Right. Right. So we need to come up with backup solutions for those as well. Okay. To like a VPN or something? Uh, having clients in, in uh, not AWS, but several other uh, places. Oh, okay. Cool. Thank you.